what I would encourage you to do, if you haven't, is to look at what is the school spirit? What is the culture that you have? And how do your children embrace that? And by creating a culture, we can help our kids begin to take ownership in the schools that, that they're part of and, and be proud of that. But be aware of the fact that creating culture and creating pride in um, who you are as people is important. I think we even see it in Scripture. I think we see, you know, the, the children of Israel, the Jewish people, um, they had identity. They had culture. They had a way of recognizing Jewish people. Like they did something ceremonially that set them apart from everybody else. And they were based on a promise. And that promise that they had carried them through a lot of different things. So there was always this identity of who you are, what it meant to be um, a child of Abraham. Today is Teaching Tips Thursday. Uh, it's always a fun day. And today we're going to talk a little bit about school spirit and um, naming your homeschool. So uh, for anybody who's watching, if you have named your homeschool, what is the name of your school? Can you put your school in? Uh, I'd love to see them. Hello, Tiff, Teresa May, Julia, Laura, Aniston, and Carissa. Good to see you guys. Glad you're here. Um, hey, it's something that, um, <clears throat> let's see, Teresa, Jess, Tabby, um, Jay Alaya, uh, Kim Now Kelly, Teresa May, and uh, Madeline, Sarah, Lakeside Learning Academy, Morning Glory, Boarding School, uh, Berean Academy, like that, uh, the Gillen Water Academy, but I'd like to rename it. All right, so hey, so one of the things, that the reason that we do teaching tips, um, we've been homeschooling for well over, over 25 years now. I've uh, been parenting for over 30 and um, made mistakes. And I think uh, if we could share some wisdom that maybe a family could grab and apply it and save them a little bit or maybe encourage them to continue in the way that they're going, uh, we just, we want to see homeschoolers succeed. And so this is kind of a way to, you know, obviously if your homeschool is successful, uh, the curriculum is going to be successful and we want to see you go succeed as homeschoolers and families, uh, especially in this market, because I feel like master books serves a market of people that are very seriously committed to biblical authority, training up their children, very purpose driven homeschooling, if you will. And, one of the things that that we tend to see in homeschools are we just kind of oh we homeschool uh, we don't necessarily look at creating a culture and there's a culture for everything your family has a culture right now maybe the maybe the family culture is um, uh, chaos and anger maybe it's boring and and mundane. Maybe it's excited and adventurous. Maybe, you know, there's a culture that you have in your home. Uh, your, your identity as a family has a culture. Uh, churches have a culture. Businesses have a culture. And, and you create that culture. And, um, but a lot of times homeschools don't necessarily have, we're not intentional about creating a culture. And, and I think it's really important. Um, do you know that, uh, well, there have been studies that show that the school spirit or school pride, if you will, um, will develops uh, an emotional connection to the student, to the school, and helps students take ownership. Like one of the things that a lot of change, you know, principal changes, what would you call them? A change agent will come in and he'll, he or she will work to 
change the the school spirit the culture of the school you know the colors making sure that the students are proud of of the colors the mascot the slogans the like the whole school gets on board with who they are and um, and the culture that's created so I think what I would encourage you to do if you haven't is to look at what is the school spirit? What is the culture that you have? And how do your children embrace that? Because sometimes we see, and, and we've seen it in our kids as well, where um, our, our students will almost be like, they don't have anything to be excited about. We homeschool. Well, we're kind of excited about homeschooling because it's counterculture. It's almost an in-your-face type thing. But to our kids who, who are out and about with their peers, like my daughter would the last thing you would know about her was that she was homeschooled she would she would let you know everything else but she had no um, pride in being homeschooled and some kids are going to be that way I have a son he enjoyed telling people he homeschooled because sometimes he enjoyed just the conflict that it might have or whatever and that was his identity but if you think about it like um, uh, think about a church right Let's say the church that we go to is completely mundane. There's not much personality there. There's no community, there's no potluck dinners, there's no annual picnics, there's no connection where we build community. We just kind of walk into the building. Um, we don't really even know the name of the church. The church is the, uh, you know, maybe the no name church in the community. Uh, there's the sign. Um, you know, is, is broken and kind of yesteryear and some of the letters are faded and, and that. Um, how inclined are you to take ownership of that community and to bring people and to invite people to that, to tell people we attend that church? Now, we attend a church now where they've done a really good job at creating community and a culture. When you come down the road, you see the sign and the sign it's, you know, you could call it branding, but the sign lets everybody know this is this church. And, and then when you come in, the people in the parking lots are wearing T-shirts that say part of this community, you know, and then they greet you with welcome to our community. We're excited that you're here. When you walk in, everything about the place represents the mission statement of the place and the brand or um the pride that they have in gathering together, like what makes them unique in the community. Now, I know we could say, well, we shouldn't really be marketing the gospel. We do market the gospel, but um, this is just an illustration to help us understand, right? How, and how excited are we about No Name Church versus Awesome Church when we're part of Awesome Church? And, and there's almost a sense of pride of saying, well, I go to Awesome Church, you know, the one that actually takes care of their building, they have some of the friendliest people. They make sure that the kids are taken care of well. Um, everybody's safe. We get together and we do things. It's not just about, you know, Sunday morning, there's, there's community uh, and all of that versus saying well, we go to No Name Church, it's okay. That's kind of the position we put our children in, right? Like, like we, we end up, we almost end up putting our kids in a place where it's, there's nothing to really be excited about. There's nothing for them to take ownership of. They just do another way of learning that's different from everybody else. And so we can begin to create a culture for our schools, for our kids, and increase school's pride or school spirit to help them begin to take ownership. And, and it shows that when kids, when kids are proud of what they do, they do better academically. Um, they tend to be more engaged they're more proponents of the type of school that, that they're part of. And so when you look at some of the universities do this all the time too, right? Like, you know, uh, in Arkansas, man, woo pig suey, you better be a Razorback fan. You, you better wear the colors and it is a culture. Well, who cares, right? But a community cares because if I wear the Razorbacks hat, now I'm part of uh, the community. I belong to something. There's pride in, in a region around that. And colleges do that because they know that if they can create a strong sense of school pride, 
that they have higher enrollments and they keep students longer because students want to continue being part of that. So we can do that in our homeschools. We are leaders. We create the culture. And, and by creating a culture, we can help our kids begin to take ownership in the schools that, that they're part of and, and be proud of that. Um, I think, um, I think like one school, okay, this, this was a slow, uh, the, the slogan of their school, this is what they used as their rally point. We are lions, we have heart, we are proud of our families, we support each other, rain or shine, good or bad. We have pride in our campus, in ourselves. We remember that everything we do and say represents the blank high school. The lion is strong yet meek, proud yet humble, loud yet quiet. The lion leads, excels, and perseveres. A lion never, ever gives up. Why? Because we are lions. Now you may roll your eyes and say, oh, brother, give me a break. But try to remember what it was like to be a kid. We live in a country right now where, uh, or in a county, the school district, I think they're Bobcats. And it's Go Bobcats. It's school pride. You know, they wear the colors, the, the stores, Go Bobcats, you know. And everybody's proud of their team. When you homeschool in this community, it's almost like unless you don't have identity. And, and so that's tough. And so my job, what I want to do is to be able to create an identity um, for for uh, for my kids that, and it doesn't have to be a homeschool identity, it can just be your Pratt, like, <laughs> you could be a Pratt identity. It can be your name identity, that that this is what it means. And, and homeschooling is part of what that means. Like, we are Pratt's, and this is how Pratt's conduct themselves. And, and Pratt's, we do homeschooling, and that's part of what we do. You can, you can create that culture but be aware of the fact that creating culture and creating pride in um, who you are as people is important. I think we even see it in scripture. I think we see, you know, the, the children of Israel, the Jewish people, um, they had identity. They had culture. They had a way of recognizing Jewish people. Like they did something ceremonially that set them apart from everybody else. And they were based on a promise. And that promise that they had carried them through a lot of different things. So there was always this identity of who you are, what it meant to be um, a child of Abraham. And, and so we see precedence for the fact that human nature is that we want to belong. And belonging to something bigger than ourselves, a tribe that has strong leadership and strong identity in, in, in all of that is helpful. So, um, you know, I'll tell you our story. We, years ago when we started the homeschool, now we've played with different names, and I think the last time I talked about this, I was playing with a name as well. Um, but our original school name comes from a verse in Genesis. It's talking about Abraham and, um, uh, let's see, or Isaac. And Isaac was 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 you know, being blessed, and the Philistines had asked him to leave, and so he took his, everybody, and let's see, it's uh, Genesis 26, 19, Isaac's servants also dug in the Gehir Valley and discovered a well of fresh water. But then the shepherds from Gehir came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said, and they argued it over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Isaac, which means argument. Isaac's men then dug another well, but again, there was a dispute over it, so Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another one. This time, there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space, for he said, at last, the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in the land. From there, Isaac moved to Beersheba, where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am God of your father Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants, and they will become a great nation. And I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. There Isaac built an altar, and he worshipped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place, and his servants dug another well. Um, we, our first, the name of our first homeschool was Rehoboth. And it was, it was from a time when it was a promise that the Lord had given to us 
to give us a place where our family could prosper and also become a mighty nation. And the, 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 that became Rehoboth Academy, even though we didn't have shirts and we didn't do a lot of that type of thing, that became a core of who we were as a family. And um, about the same time, we were pregnant with our fifth uh, child. And I remember just being a little bit depressed, like, ooh, I don't know, man, five kids, you know, and, and it was just a little overwhelming. And there was another man that I worked with, and he just gave me a real encouragement. He said, you know, a large family is a force to be reckoned with. Everywhere they go, they change the atmosphere of the place that they go. If they move into a community, they just they change the community. If they move into um, if they move into a church, they change the atmosphere of the church. If they wherever they go, they just change the atmosphere of the place. And he's like, your family is becoming a force to be reckoned with. And wow, that was such a cool realization, like that that's who we were becoming. Just like Isaac in this place where he had become too powerful for the Philistines and they were worried about him. And he was having, he was like on a journey and he was in a place where every place he went wasn't right. And then he found this place where it's like, here the Lord can prosper us and we are becoming a great nation. Our mantra is that we were a force to be reckoned with. And over the years, that was kind of the theme that I would, ex I would try to get across. Um, <clears throat> when we came into a church that was really a mess and we felt the Lord was, was asking us to, um, to come, you know, pastor, uh, all of us came. It was, it was the Pratts showed up and we did, um, you know, we painted, we we, I had enough kids that we were the entire Sunday school department. People on, would, would leave on Sunday after church, and when they would come back, we would have, you know, we'd have gone through and painted the entire sanctuary. We'd have everything cleaned. We'd have all this stuff done. We just had enough mass to make things happen because we were a force to be reckoned with. Now, combine that, like we talked about last week, with the mission statement, which is, uh, our mission statement, my mission statement, is for His glory. So for His glory, we are a force to be reckoned with. And um, I saw earlier this year, we had a family funeral, and my daughter said, you know, we brought it. Like, now it's not just the nine kids. It's the nine kids and the, and the four, four spouses and uh, six grandkids seven grandkids, soon to be seven. Um, I mean, like when we come into a place like that, we brought, um, we brought it. And so that's something really cool that we were able to, um, to do and, and who we are. So I almost see like what we planted 20 some years ago as a family in our core philosophy, this Rehoboth Academy, that we are a force to be reckoned with. We're creating world changers. We're developing the chops to succeed in life and the skills to be excellent people, to be ambassadors for Christ. And now as I watch that unfolding as adults, it didn't just stop when they graduated Rehoboth Academy. Like that's the name on my children's uh, graduation certificate is that they graduated from Rehoboth Academy. But it doesn't stop there because that school spirit, that school mission, that school pride carried on to who we are as a family because homeschooling is part of our family identity too. So um, just I hope that that kind of helps. Now what about naming a school? How do you name a school? Um, let's see, uh, Julie Farnham says, I love that, can I copy you? Absolutely, there's enough room in the world for money, Rehoboth Academies. Um, Tabby says, I say we bring the party. I like that. Um, love this. Thank you for encouragement, Joyful Mommy says. Kathy's the Philippians 4, 8 Academy. Yeah, it could be a promise. Like if there's a scriptural promise. And see, our, our promise it also, we had, we had our oldest and then we had some miscarriages. And there's a scripture that says, um, enlarge the place of your tent. 
And that was the promise that the Lord had given us when we had one child and really we didn't know if we would ever have another child again. And, um, and that enlarged the place of our tent kind of became the promise, which now then Rehoboth Academy also fit into that whole narrative that we've had in our family theme. And um, <clears throat> so it could be a promise that you're holding to, a scriptural promise, you know? Maybe it's um, the known or, or, you know, a scripture, like Pro Philippians 4 8 Academy. Um, could just, you could make it the 4 8 Academy. Uh, for, you know, like identity, just throwing out some ideas with identity with our church, one of the things that I wanted to convey was sometimes I would get in, called into these situations like a child that had just been burned severely and I'm at the helicopter pad as they're loading the, the dad and, and the child onto the helicopter or, or somebody who's having repeated seizures or, you know, I'd be right there at the surgery before as they were beginning to take somebody into the operating room. So one of the things that I wanted to do with the culture was to have a signal that everybody knew that that was, um, that was like a comfort. It was like the code in our tribe at, at the church that I pastored. And so um, one of the things we would do is the three, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not under your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, he will direct your paths. And that no matter what you're going through, whether it was into the operator room, getting onto the helicopter, whatever, to, to lean not on your own understanding, but in this moment to trust the Lord. And so when we would see somebody, I might be, I might see somebody across the street or in a restaurant, and I would just give them, hey, three men, and I would post three, and that, that three became like a symbol for our church. And when I was in, in, a, in a situation where I'd be sitting in the hospital, I could easily just give somebody a little bit of comfort by going, three, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, it's, it's core to who we are as a, as, as a tribe that we don't lean on our own understanding. We trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we know that he is directing our paths. And if you combine that with his other promises, we know that he, all things work together for good for those who love him in accord and to his purpose. Like, there's a way of comforting everybody without saying a word, just being there and, and, and bringing up the identity that we have. So, um, you know, it could be tied into your mission statement. Uh, last week I talked about the mission statement that, that I have of For His Glory. It could easily be Glory Academy or, you know, the Glory School or whatever like that. You, could, you can be as creative as you want um, that, you know, you could have your, have your kids suggest names. Choose some names that the kids suggest, the, the, the last name. Um, you know, some names can be kind of an in-your-face name where yeah, um, it's, it's, you know, we, we do uh, the better place, the better school, the better academy. Like you can be creative in a way that captures who your family is and what you want to accomplish, but also that your kids can embrace. Uh, one of them that we had entertained was Adventure Academy because we love as a family, we love new adventures, we love new foods, new things, and um, and they challenge us to, to grow and do new things as well. So Adventure Academy was one, Growth Academy or the Growth School, um, School Without Walls, anything that you think would help you begin to brand and identify your school. And you can always change it if it doesn't work. But then you begin to use the vocabulary that identifies the mission of the school and who you are as people, right? So like this, we are lions. Who are lions? Lions have heart. Lions are proud of their families. Lions support each other, rain or shine, good or bad. Okay, so then you end up in a situation where you're at church and little your little son um, joins up with somebody else and is mean to his brother and his brother's feelings are hurt. And that's the time that you say, hey, we are lions. Like, lions have heart. We are proud of our family. We support each other. Like, I got your back, and he, and he has your back. Uh, rain or shine, good or bad. 
Like my mantra has always been in leadership. I will be the first one on the battlefield. I will be the last one to leave and everybody goes home together. And that, that mantra becomes core. And every time, um, every time I see my kids in a position where uh, we had a position, a, a, a situation a few years ago where uh, one of our family friends had, had, um, had done something that it wasn't a big deal, but he just had some people um, betraying him, so to speak. And so one of the things we would do, and I did with them, is just say, this isn't how we roll. Like, for us, we, we all go home together. Like, we don't turn on our friend because other people have. Like, even though it's not popular to stand beside him, we will go on that battlefield with him. We have his back until we all leave together. Like, that's who we are as people. And so you begin to reinforce the culture to them that this is who we are. This is how we roll, right? We believe the Word of God is truth. And it doesn't matter what everybody else says is truth. The only truth we believe is the Word of God. And, when, and, and we are willing to pay the ultimate price to, to hold true to what we believe. Because that's who we are. You see it with Marines and, and, and the Navy SEALs. There's a code of honor. There's strong identity in who they are. You know, they're part of a team. You don't abandon the team. Uh, there's values and ethics. They're creative. There's just certain slogans and things that they hold to as part of their teams. And so for you guys who are, who, who, you're the leaders you're the leaders, you're creating the culture, you're creating the spirit, you're creating something for, for the kids to be proud of and to identify with, then you choose something um, and begin just interfacing it, interjecting it into um, the daily vocabulary. Uh, like one of the things I like about this, okay, we have pride in our campus, and we have pride in ourselves. Like there are so many things, hey, you're a lion. You have pride in your campus. That means the schoolroom needs to be clean. The house needs to be clean and presentable because self-respect permeates from every aspect of our being. It's a quote from my favorite movie. Uh, we have pride in ourselves. What does that mean? That means you get up in the morning, you get dressed. That means you get up and you brush your teeth and you prepare yourself because you have pride in yourself. Uh, see how you could begin to interject that? We brush our teeth because we are lions and lions have pride in themselves. We remember that everything we do and say represents. You could easily adapt something like that. Everything we do and say represents our family name and the king of kings. Uh, the lion is strong. We have strength, yet meek. We are proud, yet humble, loud, yet quiet. We exceed, we excel, and we persevere. We never give up. Those things just beginning to interject something like that statement. That's just what I found for a school that somebody created. And I imagine that they that's their mantra and they use the vocabulary as they're talking. They probably have it printed out on different things for the students. So it's always a reminder of this is who we are. This is how we roll. These are the rules we play the game by. And for my family, it's, it's, it's worked. I've gotten to see my family when we are a force to be reckoned with. And we, we are game changers. Now I'm watching the transition because they move from like toddlers to awkward to adults. And it gets more awkward. And then, and then all of a sudden it's like, bang, there they are. Uh, they're a nation. And, and it's so cool to see this happening. And it's so cool to be witness to something that we started 20 years ago. Some of you are doing this. You're back where we were 20 years ago and you have the opportunity to begin creating a culture for your family and for your school that your kids can be proud of and that they can, they can develop the emotional connections and, and engage in and say, no, this is who we are. We're proud to be in this family. We're proud to be educated different than everybody else. We are an elite. We're being, we are, we're being educated as elite people. Um, so, okay, let's, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Laura said something. Ours is Desert Light Academy, seeking to serve and reflect our light of the world in the desert. 
I think that's awesome, Laura. Especially your family, your family brand has is desert. Uh, like a lot of the things that you post and and everything as well. So it's kind of cool because you you're able to incorporate the physical location with the spiritual application and um, and who you are as a family, even in your adventures. That's cool. Uh, let's see, Amanda, how can I have a meeting with our kids, oldest of seven, to decide a school name and statement? Ask them. If we were going to give our school a name, a serious name, and maybe even we would get some shirts done, you know, you can go to you can go to Walmart and buy the iron-ons, create a logo and iron it onto a shirt. It's simple for that, for seven-year-olds. But if we were going to give a name, what would be the name? And maybe they could make suggestions. Maybe you could go um, and do a uh, do like a search or a Pinterest or something for school names, and see see what different names there are. See if there's any that they like. Um, you know, it doesn't let them know that that we're just looking at ideas. We're not choosing today. Just looking for ideas until we find the perfect one, and then we can go with that. So that's what I would recommend, Nicole. Let's see, Julie says, ours is Grace Alone Academy because without God's grace, we are all lost in sin. Good one, yep. And let's see, all right. Well, I hope that was helpful and that it gave you some ideas and, and um, maybe something to be excited about and something to think about anyways. Mission statement helps us know where we're going, right? We talked about it last week. It's like plugging the address into the GPS. It just helps keep us on track. The name and the school spirit creates the culture that we operate in. It just helps us um, accomplish the mission, but it really helps our kids uh, identify with, um, with who we are as people. And once you have culture, and you use the words in the culture, it's so easy to just bring that in. It's not just, hey, you need to, you need to not be mean to your brother, right? That's cool, but that's not who we are. Like, you can change it to, to you shouldn't be mean. You shouldn't be mean to them. Um, you shouldn't be a bully. Two, well, that's not who we are. Who we are, and the core of who we are is this. And it, we're this because we are this. And, and then... Hopefully that's helpful.